Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is calculate um, percent changes so that we can find inflation rates over time. Um, the formula for percent change is on this reference page um, on this website. Um, you essentially take the new value so, and then minus the old value and then divide by the old value. Um, or new minus old over old. And it has a, a helpful acronym N minus O over O, or it looks like no. So if you just remember N O O, that's the easiest way to do percent change. You take the current value minus the previous value divided by previous value. And that shows how much of a percent change there is from like 1990 to 1991, 1991 to 1992, etc. Um, so to do this, we can figure out kind of general annual inflation rates, like how much inflation is growing. Um, by calculating the percent change of the CPI here. So we're just going to right click on this column to insert a new column. Um, so it's just right next to the CPI here. And we'll just call this annual inflation. Um, make it a little bit wider so the text fits. Okay, so we can't, given the data we have here, we don't have a previous value. We can't take 127 um, minus whatever was the, what the CPI was in 1989. We don't have that. So we have to start here in 1991 instead. So we're going to make a new formula, and we're going to say equals um, 134.7 minus 127.5. Um, we want to put that in parentheses. Um, and then we're going to divide by the previous value, 127.5, um, and make sure the parentheses is facing the right way. And now we have um, a value here, which we can actually format as a percent. So let's go ahead and do that so you can see this better. So add some um, decimal points there. So between 1990 and 1991, there was 5% inflation. Um, if we move this down a row, um, between 1991 and 1992, there was 2% inflation. And if we drag all the, this all the way down to the bottom, we can see annual inflation over time. Um, was roughly 3%, 1%. Um, in 2006, it was up to 4%. We had some deflation during the recession in 2009. We had some other minor deflation in 2015. Um, and so you can kind of see, um, in general, how the inflation rate has been going annually. Um, so that's how you, you calculate percent change. Um, because we're basing it on the CPI itself, it's showing us the general inflation rate. Um, you could also calculate the percent change for any of these other columns to see how um, personal income per capita is growing over time. Um, you can do that, especially if you have adjusted for um, inflation with one of these real values, 1982 or, or 2018 here, um, you can see how much um, income is growing just by itself, um, not because of inflation. Um, so you can see if, if there's any growth in um, kind of living standards outside of just inflation happening. Um, so that's, that's how you calculate inflation there. Um, it doesn't always have to be annual. You can say, like, how much has inflation grown between 2018 and 1990? Um, the tricky part here, though, is it gets really tempting. Um, you could say, um, so let's just come down to the bottom, and we say overall inflation. Um, so we say new, it's new minus old over old. So we can say equals. So the new CPI is this 249 um, minus the CPI back in 1990 and then divide by the CPI back in 1990. And so what that shows is there's been like a 95% inflation level since um, 2018. But that's not entirely accurate because that does not mean that um, inflation has grown, like that's not the annual level of inflation. Um, it, it does show that like the CPI has almost doubled um, from 127 to 249, so it's almost 100%. But if you're talking about kind of general annual inflation, that's not going to be accurate. Um, because what happens is you actually have compounding inflation. So if you're familiar with compound interest, um, you earn money, stick it in a bank, it earns interest, and then the next year or the next month or the next day or however often they compound it, you take that amount plus the interest and then add interest to that. And then you take that amount plus interest plus interest and add more interest to that. And so it keeps growing and compounding. Inflation does the same thing. Um, if you go up from 127 to 134, there was 5% inflation there. Um, if you're going from 127 to 138 here, um, part of that growth in, in the CPI has already been taken care of by this 5% inflation there. So we have to take that into account. We have to consider the compounding when we're trying to look at average inflation over time. 
So to do that, there's two different formulas we can use. There are finance formulas. There's actually a way in Excel to do this um, using some built-in formulas. I like to do it by hand um, just so you can see all of the different moving parts and it helps, helps it make more sense. Um, you may have seen these in past like economics classes or finance classes. Um, Basically, the formula for compounding interest is this thing right here um, with all of these, these fun letters. So the A here represents the price at the end of the time period. Um, so if we want to, if we're looking at, in, at CPI here, this is going to be the CPI in 2018. If we want to see the average inflation between 1990 and 2018. P here is going to be the price or the CPI value at the beginning of the time period. So this is going to be CPI in um, 1990. And then it has all of this fun here, the fun stuff here. We have 1 plus R over N to the nth and teeth power here. Um, these are just different parts of this equation here. Um, the N means how often the, uh, the interest rate is compounded. Um, and so like if you have a bank account, it might compound every month. And so the N here would be 12. If it happens every day, then it'd be like 365. If it happens once a year, then the N is gonna be one. Um, typically with the CPI thing, it's supposed to be compounding like continuously, um, but we'll just pretend that it's compounding every year. On January 1st, they'd get a new inflation rate or something like that. T is the number of time periods that, are, that exist between the, the ending time and the starting time. And then R is the rate. And we actually don't know this rate. We know the value at the end. We know the value at the beginning. We know N, we'll just pretend that that's one because it's happening once a year. And we know T, we know how many years there are between 2018 and 1990, but we don't know this R. So we need to rearrange this formula so that we have R by itself. And so it'll say R equals stuff, a really complicated formula. Um, so what that looks like is this. Which again, this is like this is algebra rearranging terms and exponentiating and logging stuff. Um, you don't need to know exactly how you get here if you haven't taken algebra for years. Um, and this is all just below this video on the reference page here. Um, but this is how we get R by itself. So if we exponentiate um, this fraction here, which is the log of CPI in, 19, in 2018 divided by the CPI in 1990, over the number of time periods, um, how many years there are in between, and then minus one, that will give us the average annual inflation rate for that time period. Okay, so that, that sounds confusing, um, but if you reference this formula here, we'll be able to, to do it in Excel. So we're gonna move this over to the side here, and we're going to say average inflation. So the way we calculate this is we copy that formula. We're gonna say equals EXP, which means exponentiate. So we're going to open parentheses and close parentheses. Um, oh, don't hit arrow keys here. Okay, so exponentiate, and then inside the parentheses, we're going to say LN, open parentheses, and we want the CPI in 2018, right there, divided by the CPI in 1990, which is right there. Okay, so then that fraction needs to be divided by the number of years between 2018 and 1990. Um, we could just count that by hand and go 1990 to 1991, 92, 93, 94, 95, and keep going all the way to 2018, but that's tedious. Um, so what we can actually do is build that into the equation here. We can say, um, open parentheses, 2018 minus 1990, and then we have to add one extra year because of because it's an inclusive range, um, kind of like how um, if you just say like how many numbers are there between one and ten, you can't just say ten minus one because that's nine, but there are actually ten numbers: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, so you need to add one more number to take into account the fact that you're subtracting here. So that is our t. That's the number of time periods, and then with all of that, we can close the parentheses one more time, and then minus one. So we have um, the exponentiated version of the log of those two um, CPI values, the 2018 one and the 20 or the 1991, divided by the number of time periods there were, um, and then minus one. So if we hit that, or if we run this equation now, we see that on average every year, taking into account the compounding um, of the inflation, 
that we've had like a 2.3% um, average level of inflation um, year by year, um, which is good because, again, we talked in the lecture about how you know, the Fed's target inflation is between 2 to 3% every year. Um, and the fact that we're at like two and a half ish percent is kind of a good sign that they've been doing an okay job at that. Um, so there we go. That's how you can figure out average inflation um, using kind of this this more complicated um, formula here. There's actually a simpler version of this. In here, we just assume that um, inflation only occurs on January 1st. And so there's no inflation up until December 31st. And then the next day, all prices suddenly rise, which is not the case. Um, inflation happens continuously. Prices change all the time on a daily, minutely basis. Um, so we don't want to necessarily use this equation here. Instead, we want to use the equation for continuous compounding interest. And this one's actually simpler here, um, where the A means the same thing. This is the value in 2018. The P is the previous value um, back in 1990. And then we use this E, which isn't a variable. This is just a, a mathematical constant. It's kind of like pi. Um, this is like 2.3 something. Um, it's just kind of a natural log of, of numbers. It's, it's just a strange constant that exists. So we take e and then raise it to the power of the rate, which we don't know, and the time, which we do. So the number of time periods. This is 2018 minus 1990 plus 1. So if we rearrange this so we get the r by itself, because that's the thing we want to know. We want to know what the, what the rate is. Um, it ends up looking like this. So r is equal to the natural log of those two CPI values divided by the number of time periods. And that's all you have to do. Um, so let's go ahead and do that equation here in Excel. So this is going to be average inflation continuous. Okay, so our formula, again referencing the actual formula we have on the page, is equals, um, so we want ln, so the natural log of the current CPI, so this 249, divided by the old CPI, which was 1990. And let's come back down here, and then close parentheses, and then divide by the number of time periods which again, we can just do here and say 2018 minus 1990 plus one. And that should show us the continuous version of the average inflation, which is basically the same um, as, as what we did when we just said inflation happens once a year. It's a little bit lower, 2.31 instead of 2.34. Um, this is probably more accurate because inflation happens continuously. It's not a, a yearly thing. Um, but that's kind of two different ways to look at the average annual level of growth of, uh, of inflation here. Um, and so that's how you can calculate um, two different versions of inflation. Um, so the last thing we're going to do is answer a specific question about inflation and how, it's, how prices have kept up with inflation or not. Because um, right now we've just been like dragging columns down and seeing a whole bunch of numbers and, and that's neat, I guess. Um, but often you'll have an exact question that says like um, prices for houses in 1990 were this value. Today they are some other value. Um, how much have they grown um, in, in value over time? And so if you look at the, the page for today, um, I have this, this example question down below where it says like median home prices. So we'll make a little uh, table down here called medium home, median home prices. In nominal values, let's expand this a little bit. So the nominal value of median home prices, which means what was actually written down at the time. So in 1990, um, cool. So Excel formats dates funny. So we're going to say 1990 01 01. So it writes it as January 1st here. And then we'll say 2018. 0101. So in 1990, the median home price was $125,000 for a house. Um, by the time we got to 2018, that was 329,600. So that's a pretty big growth right there. And we can actually calculate the percent change here um, by using the new minus old over old um, formula. So we say equals 329,600 divided by 125. Uh, 125,000, if we put that in parentheses, um, or not, so new minus old divided by old. So there's our formula. 
326 um, minus 125 divided by 125. So this shows, if we format this as a percent, that home prices in nominal terms have increased by 163%. They've more than doubled. Um, and so that seems like really bad and super expensive for everybody. But that's not entirely true because this is $1990. This is, um, it was a lot cheaper back then because inflation wasn't the same level as it is today in 2018. So you can't really con compare these two values um, across time without making sure that they're on the same scale. So what we need to do is convert these values into some year. We can convert it into $1982, we can convert it into $2018, to $1990, whatever. It doesn't matter what year, it just has to be the same year for both of them. So let's go ahead and just turn it into $2018, um, which it likes to format as a percent here. We'll just call this a number there. Okay, so in $2018, um, the way we convert this again is if we um, remember the formula, it's going to be the nominal price divided by the price index divided by 100. Okay, so it's going to be equal to $125,000 divided by, and then we'll open parentheses here, the price index for 1990. Um, we could come up and use the 1982 CPI, um, but since we already have like $2018 here, um, we can just switch it to $2018, which we have over here as this column here. So that's our CPI for 2018, um, for 1990. So it is nominal value, divided by that price index, divided by 100. And we close parentheses. And this is, again, not a percent. Let's tell it to just be a number and get rid of the decimal points. So in nominal or in real terms, so in 2018, even though back in 1990 it was $125,000 to buy a house, in 2018 dollars, that's $240,000, which isn't as cheap as it sounds back in 1990. That's still relatively expensive. Um, and then in 2018 dollars, that's just going to be the same thing. So we can just say equals 329. We don't really need to convert this to 2018 dollars because it already is 2018 dollars. So this, these two values here, we've accounted for inflation. We've taken the inflation out of it. And so this is just the growth in home values or home prices that has happened not because of inflation, because of other reasons. So if we calculate the percent change here now, we can say equals um, new minus old divided by old. So this is different. Now this is 34%. So that means since 1990, home prices in the United States have grown by 34%. Um, not, or that's accounting for inflation, that's accounting just for the fact that prices naturally rise by themselves. Um, so for some reason, homes have become more expensive um, for a whole host of reasons. And if you go into like real estate economics, you can figure out why. Um, but this is kind of the inflation adjusted growth in home prices. Um, so there we go. This is kind of the more accurate version. This number here doesn't really mean anything because we're comparing um, two different types of dollars here. This lets us compare the same type of dollars and get a more accurate version of how much um, home prices have grown. Um, the last thing we can ask is what was the average um, growth in home prices every year um, over time? So this is saying like over 30 or over however many years this is, um, the total amount of, of change in home prices was like 34%. Um, it's very tempting to say, what's the average version of this? You just divide by however many years there were here. Um, we built that directly into this equation here, but we'll just make a, another variable here called years. And this is just gonna be equal to 2018 minus 1990 plus one. That way we don't have to keep typing it. And that is actually a number. There we go. So that is 29 years between 2018 and 1990. So it's tempting to say, what is the average inflation rate every year? Um, where if you just said equals this 34% divided by 29, then that's gonna look like it's growing by 1.2% every year. But that's not actually true because that's not um, taking into account the fact that inflation makes stuff grow and it's compounding um, the change in price. So instead we need to use um, our um, compound annual growth rate formulas here. Um, we'll use the easy one um, because I, 
it has fewer parentheses and it's more accurate because again, home prices don't magically increase on January 1st every year. They increase just all the time. So we'll use this formula here where we want the natural log instead of CPI new and CPI old, this is gonna be home prices new, so the 2018 home prices and home prices old, so the 1990 home prices. And then the T is gonna be our 29 years. So if we move this over, this is gonna be the compound annual growth rate, and it actually has an acronym called the CAGR. Um, just very lovely acronym here. Um, so we'll just copy the formula. So equals the natural log of the new price, which is the 329, divided by the old price in um, real terms here, so the 1990 and 2018 dollars, and then divided by the number of years, which we can just click here, and that's uh, 29 years. So if we enter there, now our annual growth rate is 1% instead of 1.2%. So that's taking into account um, just the fact that home prices are compounding on top of each other every year. So basically, um, over the past 29 years, um, home, rate, or home prices have gone up on average by 1% every year, um, outside of inflation. Um, they've gone up um, 2 percent just because of inflation, um, but then outside of inflation, they're also just kind of getting more expensive year by year. Um, and so we can see that by looking at this compound annual growth rate, which shows us kind of the average level of growth. Um, so that's how we can answer some, some questions about um, changes in prices over time. Um, some basic um, economic analysis here. This is your first introduction to doing economic stuff. Um, your problem set will give you some examples um, of doing similar calculations. Um, and so have fun with that. Refer back to this video for more help. Um, you can download the full complete version of this um, spreadsheet from the website. So you can have that as a reference. You can see the formulas. Um, and hopefully it's, it's fairly easy to follow. So good luck.